Hello and welcome to Your Choice 2024 primary election coverage on home TV. I'm your host, Danisha McDowell. Today, we're here for a candidate interview with Mark Polsdoffer, Democratic candidate for Ingham County Commissioner for the 14th District. Mark, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you very much for having me. Of course. Before we get started, may you please briefly introduce yourself to the viewing audience. Sure. Uh, my name is Mark Polsdoffer. I'm the incumbent county commissioner for District 14, covering the uh, roughly the southern half of Meridian Township and uh, the, the bulk of Okemos. And I currently serve as the chair of our Law and Courts Committee and also serve on finance. And uh, in addition to that, I serve as the uh, county commissioner representative on the board of directors for LEAP, which is the Lansing Economic Area Partnership. Thank you. Each 14 district candidate will be asked a standard list of questions. Starting with question number one, please explain how your education and professional background <coughs> make you an ideal candidate for Ingham County Commissioner in the 14th District. Thank you. Um, I think at this point, having been elected in 2018, I've developed a strong track record of uh, service that is uh, worthy of uh, uh, folks considering uh, re-electing me again. Um, I, I focus very much on dealing with the issues and challenges that people bring before me to address and to highlight a few of them. Uh, since I last sat for an interview with Home TV, the uh, Okemos Road Bridge project at the time was actively under construction. And as everyone knows, it was uh, behind schedule, it was scheduled to uh, be finished in November of 22. And uh, ultimately, because of certain delays and surprises and uh, other things, it, we weren't able to get the uh, bridge completed until March of 2023. And one of the issues that came up is in a standard construction cycle, basically when you hit uh, mid-November, that's considered with contractors the end of a construction cycle. Now, in this instance, they continued to press on and advance the work on the bridge, but uh, something occurred with the one of the subcontractors that was doing some of the concrete work and in January they uh, basically declared that they were done working and that they would be back in late March and I knew right off the bat that that was entirely unacceptable so we uh, started looking very promptly on what our options would be. And what we came up with was we released that subcontractor and found a new sub subcontractor that would continue to do the work. But one of the uh, challenges that this posed was uh, for this entire bridge project, everything with the contracting was established and set in place prior to the COVID pandemic and shutdown. And so when we were in active construction, <clears throat> we uh, were dealing with the resulting inflation and uh, cost increases that were in place. So the, while we were able to find a new subcontractor to start the work immediately, the price difference uh, in order to bring them on board was $184,000. And uh, this actually came to light right after we had a board meeting and we have them every two weeks. And uh, Again, I did not want to see 
work on the bridge halt for two weeks while we uh, were able to uh, come up with a solution. The solution we did find was uh, that there were some stimulus funds that had been uh, dedicated but not utilized yet by the Ingham County Health Department and we were able to obtain those funds to make up the balance. But again, we weren't able to pass a resolution to make this happen uh, for almost two weeks. So in uh, communicating with, at the time, uh, Manager Walsh and the Board of Trustees, the solution we came up with was essentially Meridian Township providing basically a letter to the subcontractor to, to uh, guarantee the full faith and credit of the township to cover that window of time uh, before we could officially dedicate and release those funds. So the township, if necessary, would uh, cover any anything that needed to happen. And the great news with uh, coming up with that solution is the next day we were able to get the sub subcontractor back out on the job and you know within within the month the bridge was opened and we were able to uh, pass our resolution at the county level release those funds and get the new subcontractor paid and get get everything taken care of please tell us about the communities and people of the 14 district and how you plan to meet their needs. Uh, the, the, the 14th district is primarily Okemos and I focus on uh, dealing with issues that come, come before me. Uh, just as another example, I had uh, some folks that live in the Briarwood neighborhood uh, reach out to me regarding some flooding that they experienced uh, with their homes that back up to the consumer's power line uh, easement that goes between Spring Lake and Briarwood. And it took some time, uh, but since that's consumer's property back there and uh, we, we needed to work with both the uh, Ingham County Drain Commissioner's Office and Consumers Energy to craft and come up with agreements between the two parties. And uh, the resulting work is uh, this, this spring they are putting in a new drain back there to help alleviate some of the flooding issues. Um, so. Uh, in in the last uh, season when there was a lot of drain work happening over uh, to the east of Tom's Grocery Store, some of the residents reached out to me uh, relating to some of the, the work that was happening a little further south into the residential neighborhoods. Uh, some of them were not happy with what was happening the the township was uh, while while they were ripping everything up for uh, the drain upgrades uh, it was done in coordination with the township for the local road millage to put new roads in and uh, some of those folks weren't happy with the way the uh, ditches were being graded and I was uh, happy to reach out and kind of be a liaison with the drain office to while while everything was an active construction project get those things addressed and modified for folks and so uh, these these are just some brief examples of when things are brought to my attention they might not be quick but I get get to work on them and we get get those issues solved for folks. The next several questions will cover prominent issues in Michigan. 
In 2022, Proposal 2 was passed by Michigan voters. This proposal brought numerous changes to elections in Michigan and the ways people can vote. Now that these changes have been put into practice, can you tell me your thoughts about these changes? Um, I'm fully supportive of those things. I think anything that we can do that makes it easier for folks to vote, you know, from the permanent absentee ballot uh, designation to extended voting times and everything else, I, I think these are all absolute positives that encourage and make easier uh, participation in our government. In 2022, Michigan voters also passed Proposal 3 the right to reproductive freedom in Michigan. Please share your stance on abortion and the governing of abortion in both Michigan and the United States. Thank you. Um, in every previous election cycle, I have been endorsed by Planned Parenthood Advocates of Michigan. And as we uh, get further along in this campaign, I anticipate earning their endorsement as well. Um, I have a long track record of uh, both w working to get candidates elected that are pro-choice and I th think it's more important now with the overturning of uh, Roe v. Wade that we work hard to make sure that we have folks at the federal level and state level that are uh, pro-choice and not uh, inhibiting reproductive freedom of choice for uh, families. You know, what we've seen when uh, folks who differ on this is they don't just stop there. They, there have been proposals to look at restricting in vitro fertilization and things like that. And I'm, I'm actively opposed to all of those things. And uh, again, have a track record of working to get folks elected and work with them to uh, advance pro-choice positions. Share your thoughts on Michigan's current infrastructure and any improvements you hope to see. Well, uh, my day job is with MDOT, so this is uh, something I'm actively involved with on a daily basis. Uh, I work in governmental affairs, and so I deal with members of the legislature on a daily basis with the challenges of uh, infrastructure statewide and it's definitely an issue that we need to uh, especially with the adoption of electric vehicles into the marketplace there's the the funding for roads comes primarily from gas and diesel tax and vehicle registration electric vehicles by their very nature don't contribute to gas and diesel tax. So long term, we do need to look at a solution to how we can properly fund our infrastructure. There, uh, the last term in the legislature, there was a proposal that uh, set up a tolling study to look at that. And so that is currently being you know, looked at and, and picked apart as a potential option. Um, but again, uh, it's, it's an issue that's going to require at the state level a lot of work on how that can make sense and be balanced to uh, be fair for rural communities and urban and everything in between. Uh, how do you plan to address economic instability and inflation within the state? Well, I, I, uh, as mentioned previously, I serve on the board of directors of LEAP. And one of the active uh, 
projects in the last two years was the Eagle Township mega site where uh, Micron was uh, considering that and the location that they ultimately chose in New York uh, to do the semiconductor uh, manufacturing. And that had, it, it was basically down to two sites, Eagle Township and the, the, in upstate New York. And uh, had we won that, that would have been a $13 billion investment in Michigan. And that, that would have been, to date, the largest single investment in uh, business in the entire state of Michigan ever. Um, the good news is, while everyone was coming together to work on that, it finally pushed public transit between Ingham and Eaton County to coordinate, and also Clinton County, to kind of coordinate the movement of people. Um, typically, that's always been a challenge and has, has not operated over county lines. And that, that changed as people were trying to pull all hands on deck to uh, present a proposal that would land that project. The good news is there's still companies that are coming and looking at that site. And while they likely won't be a $13 billion investment, uh, it's, 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 should we land one? It's, it's going to be a significant uh, project that will benefit the entire area. And I think we have a unique situation here with Lansing Community College and Michigan State University where there's really an opportunity for recruiting businesses to highlight the fact that we can customize curriculum at both of these locations to address emerging uh, business technologies that are uh, what we're hoping to recruit to that location. Recently, Michigan's automotive companies have experienced challenges related to consumer interest in electric vehicles and labor groups' interest in wage increases. How do you think the state of Michigan should be involved in supporting these companies? Well, currently there is a, a project called NEVI, which is $110 million from the federal government that was awarded to Michigan. What that proposal is, is uh, basically mapping out the entire state and figuring out where the gaps are, because people do have that range anxiety. and. The goal of utilizing these funds is to uh, figure out where those holes are and work with existing businesses to site vehicle chargers so that there's never going to be more than 50 miles in any direction with out of vehicle charger. So we can help, uh, you know, eliminate some of that range anxiety. Uh, round one of those awards have already gone out and I anticipate this will help greatly, not, not so much in Lansing where we already have car dealerships that have already added chargers or, you know, in the case of Okemos where there's one at Best Western and, you know, other locations, but if you look statewide at places like Lake, Macosta County, and things like that up north, there's likely not going to be uh, th that, you know, overwhelming drive to just make that investment in a, a vehicle charger in some of those more uh, rural locations where they have higher unemployment and other challenges that would, uh, you know, keep their focus on investing in other things. 
So th this, this program providing that funding to get those into more rural communities, I think is going to be uh, critical to, to helping to, to build that out. Um, in terms of the challenges of wages, um, we have the Ultium battery plant under construction out in Delta Township in Eaton County. And you know, those are, those are active UAW workers that will be working there adjacent to the Delta Township GM plant. And I'm fully supportive of the UAW's efforts to secure uh, strong benefits and salaries for folks that are uh, working on the emerging technology of electric vehicles and you know the suppliers to the, to that endeavor as well what do you believe to be the biggest issue facing your district and how do you plan to address it I think uh, specific to Okemos, the biggest issue is probably the Four Corners and the uh, much behind schedule uh, redevelopment uh, of, of that project. It's, it's a project that uh, started off as a five-story, four-block development and as as COVID hit and the developers continued to look at uh, market conditions and and new consumer uh, behavior, it's it's gone through many iterations now where it's not five stories; it's potentially three now, and so that that is something that's. Uh, unfortunately uh, l l largely uh, between the township planning and the developer but I remain actively engaged where I can to work with the road department and consumers energy uh, because one of the main drives here is to sync the power lines along Okemos Road so we don't have those uh, giant power poles in, involved there. Unfortunately, the price tag last I knew was north of $3 million to get that done. So we, we have our uh, work cut out for us in uh, getting all the entities together to, uh, you know, advance this project. Unfortunately, a lot of it uh, rests with the developer. Um, now, in terms of a little broader beyond just my district, we, uh, the Board of Commissioners recently uh, funded a study to look at the failing dam at Lake Lansing. And uh, I am working with Senator Singh and Rep Representative Cerniglu to hopefully find some state funding to help uh, <clears throat> supplement the cost of uh, getting that dam replaced, which uh, otherwise would fall solely on those in that drainage district. And, uh, as you can imagine, replacing a dam while also maintaining the level of the lake is going to be an, an expensive endeavor. So uh, it's something I'm actively working on. Thank you. We reached our final question. Please provide a closing statement sharing your goals for your district and the state. Thank you again. Uh, my, my goals are con to continue to uh, work hard and try and solve the issues that are brought before me and best represent my constituents when issues come before me on the board. Uh, for, for those that have questions, they can reach out 
uh, to my cell phone at 734-604-0856 or my county commission email address is m-p-o-l-s-d-o-f-e-r at ingham.org and I welcome, you know, it might be a township issue, it might be state, but if someone's not sure, feel free to reach out. I'm more than happy if, it, if it's not a county issue. Uh, I work with uh, various departments at the state and other, uh, other jurisdictions as well. Uh, I'd be honored to receive a re-election uh, from the constituents in Okemos. Thank you so much for joining me again, Mark. Thank you very much for having me. Of course. And thank you for tuning into this candidate interview with Mark Polsdoffer, Democratic incumbent candidate for Ingham County Commissioner for the 14th District. I'm Denisha McDowell. Thank you for watching.